morally and politically transformative. The day is February 20th, 1930. The Indian population is suffering from an epidemic, a lack of salt. Great Britain has created a set of laws called the Salt Act. They forced Indians to buy salt from Britain, and when they did buy it, it was at a steep price. They also could not produce their own salt. One man set out to change that. This man was named Mohandas Gandhi, an Indian lawyer who had been working in a South African firm to help persecuted Indians in South Africa. In an effort to end the British tax on salt, Mohandas Gandhi took a stand by marching from Sabamanti to the salt plains on the Arabian coast and committing dis civil disobedience. By leading the march, Gandhi shook the foundation of the British Empire with the salt tax, questioned the future of British rule, and showed that Indians were strong enough to make a difference when they stand together. The salt tax was implemented long before Britain even had control over India. It was originally created by the East India Trading Company. The company created it in order to increase their dividends and remove all their competition from the salt market. However, when Britain gained control in 1858, they saw no reason to abolish the salt tax. Before the march, Gandhi and the Congress of India sent a bill to England called the 11-point bill and asked them to bring it into action. It included economic and social reforms, such as cutting back on the British military finance plan. While working as a lawyer, Mohandas felt the true oppression and discrimination that the Indian people face day to day in South Africa. Gandhi, you're a third class untouchable. Go to the back of the bus. He was inspired by the injustice and set out to make a difference. When he returned to his home country of India, he began to see that the Indians faced many of those same oppressions in their home country also. Gandhi went to England as a representative of all the Indian people in a round table. This was an event where England disclosed their policies regarding India. The problem was, Gandhi was the only member of the round table that wanted reform. All of the other Englishmen outvoted him and the round table didn't do anything in Gandhi's favor. He decided that he would return to India to make an, a different approach in fighting the British tax. A Satyagraha rebellion is one in which the oppressed people join together and take a stand in an event of mass civil disobedience. Before embarking on his historic salt march, Gandhi participated in many other Satyagraha rebellions, including fighting for the rights of indigo farmers, the rights of textile mill workers, and for the rights of peasants in Kedah. When Gandhi taught his followers about civil disobedience, he claimed that it wasn't just a weapon for those unable to fight. It is a strategy that all people should give a try. According to popular belief, Gandhi was often called the inventor of this philosophy. He is also called the father of civil disobedience, according to Mark Shepard. However, this is not the case. Gandhi only made civil disobedience practical. Mohandas took a stand against the way that people thought that wars were to be fought. On the eve of the march, Gandhi made a grand speech to the crowd that had gathered at his religious retreat. From here, he would walk to the salt plains of Dharmi. I was starving millions, can by no means afford this enormous expenditure. I have faith in the righteousness and the purity of all weapons. A satyagra, whether free or incarnated, is ever victorious. This speech showed that with a common enemy, Indians could defeat any adversary. After all, 10,000 people were present to hear it. He had to unite the people of India in order to earn independence. As Gandhi walked his long march, the world watched. The entire march was scrutinized and judged. No one had ever seen anything like this, a war being fought without weapons. Along the way, Gandhi gave speeches in many towns to gain support for his cause. At each place he stopped, he gained followers, making his march even more important. 
Gandhi walked the whole entire march, which is around 240 miles long. It would have been easier for him to take a bus or a train. After all, he was at the age of 61. This walk could have killed him. However, his walk was a sign of disobedience. If he and his followers had chosen to take a train, they never would have gotten the publicity that they had. Newspapers from all around the world were putting Gandhi on the headlines. People even said that he walked faster than the younger people and they had a hard time catching up. Gandhi was aware that he was going to be arrested by the British after his march. He even sent a letter to Lord Irwin saying, I'm going to break a law. Lord Irwin was a, was a viceroy of India, meaning he took the place of a ruler. Gandhi wanted others to continue the fight even if he would go to jail. After all, he started the civil disobedience. This shows us that Gandhi wished to start a movement of people standing together, not just a group of men trying to get their tax reductions. He wanted more than just to abolish the salt tax. When Gandhi finally arrived in Dandi, the British were unsure as to what they were going to do. Gandhi had clearly broken one of their laws, but, it, but if they arrested him, it would build support for his cause. It was a lose-lose situation. Additionally, Lord Irwin, a deeply religious man himself, was quite fond of Gandhi. He was often known to have called him Little Man. All of this made him hesitant to arrest him when he received the letter from Gandhi before the march. Though it is not the only reason. The press was also a secret power that Gandhi used to his advantage many times through his fight for independence. In the end, the British chose to arrest him for the civil disobedience, piling logs onto Gandhi's rebellion and fueling the hatred of the British. What the British didn't realize was that all along they had a third option, repeal the salt tax. Gandhi's march shook the very foundation of the British Empire. The salt tax in Britain generated 62 lakhs, 31 million, $59,000 in today's money. I think the Salt March was, it gets a lot of attention, and I think for good reason, because, you know, the Salt March really brings to global opinion what's going on in India. Uh, people around the world had known about Gandhi. They had known, you know, his ideas of nonviolence, ahimsa, truth force, satyagraha. They, they had known these things, but the Salt March really made it very public. There was a very famous reporter for the New York Times who went along with Gandhi on it and um, is actually pretty well represented in the film Gandhi that, as you know, is over like three hours long. Um, it, it really sends a message out to the world. And, and then actually uh, in 1935, not shortly thereafter, not too long thereafter, um, you know, the British have to make major constitutional concessions to India, which they do. Britain was also pressured by many countries, especially the United States, to free India. The United States found India, India's rebellion to be similar to their own in the 1700s. Many often ask why Gandhi's salt march rallied support to crush the Raj, also known as the British rule. Most justify that the salt tax wasn't the biggest problem with the British Empire. However, when Gandhi chose to rebel against the oppressive tax, Gandhi chose the easiest thing for the Indians to relate to. The climate and culture of Indians made salt very important. Every Hindu at the time was a vegetarian and had no salt in their diet, and because of the heat in India, it was necessary to have salt. It was an oppression that they all had faced all the way down the caste system. Additionally, wherever he stopped, he stayed in third-class residence known often as untouchables residence. In the long run, Gandhi's salt march was the spirit he left behind, not only in India, but throughout the whole world. He inspired many Indians to not to only resort to violence if absolutely necessary. This eventually inspired Indians to revolt and gain their independence from Britain. Martin Luther King Jr. used the same techniques as Gandhi for civil equality in, for African Americans. Finally, Ghani's march laid the foundation for the country of India, and we would not have it without him.